What's up everybody, you're watching Know This. We are coming to you from Detroit. I am here today with Margarita Berry. She is the publisher of I'mYoungDetroit.com and also the owner of this beautiful space called 71 Pop. It's a new pop-up shop in Midtown Detroit. She's doing a lot of amazing things to really bring out the voices of young Detroit. And we're so happy to have you here. Thank you, I'm happy to be here. Or at least happy to be in your space anyway. <laughs> and we're at the Bureau for Urban Living. It's been called an urban general store, which I think is a new concept. Again, we're hearing a lot of new concepts here in Detroit because people are really innovating, they're really connecting, and they're bringing a lot of creative ideas to help revitalize the city. So we're here with the owner and Hi. founder of it. Welcome. Claire Nelson, thank you. <laughs> and we're talking to Tunde Wei, who is an entrepreneur. He is the founder of Detroit Big F Deal. What is what is the F? What's, what is the Big F Deal with Detroit? Um, can, can I curse on this? Uh, so what made you decide you wanted to open an urban general store? Where would you get that concept from? Well, I moved here from Brooklyn back in 2002, mm -hmm. and um, it was pretty clear that there were a lot of great spaces here that needed to be activated and um, to create more walkable neighborhoods, and there wasn't a lot of retail in the city, and a lot of my friends who lived downtown would have to go out to the suburbs to shop, and we'd rather keep our dollars in Detroit, so mm -hmm. this is kind of a mishmash of some of my favorite shops in other places like Brooklyn where I lived before, or Chicago, or San Francisco, or Paris even. Mm -hmm. um, we thought we'd just start with the basics to sell um, for people who wanted to live downtown and buy some basics like, you know, a wine glass or a bath towel, yeah. and then over time we've added a lot more local art and um, things that have made in the city. So how about we have a look around at some of the things and you let us know kind of what's what's what in here and sure. Yeah. Yeah, so um, we'll start up over here. I was saying that, you know, one of the, the reasons why I started and came up with this idea is because I have a, a line of stuff that I wanted to promote and sell. And this is my collection, it's called Boho Modern and so I do you know, really cool graphic prints. I'm a web designer by trade, and so you'll see a lot of typography um, influence and a lot of graphic designs. I design textiles and I sew clothes, and you know, I like to have things that are representing Detroit and Michigan, but are affordable for people, so if they're looking for gifts, they kind of come here. Um, in the middle here, we have Honey Boom, and this is a line that's curated, it's a vintage clothing line mm. of sportswear. Um, it's kind of inspired by like B-Boy in the 1980s. This is cur curated by Riz Tina. She's a okay. B-girl and a, a fashion designer. Um, and so it's really cool. And this has actually been our most popular line of stuff. Really? This, I know, okay. it's crazy, right? People in Detroit like vintage. Oh, I remember wearing shorts that look like <laughs> yeah, with the tights. <laughs> It yeah, didn't have the cool. bottoms, had the little lace on the bottom. Exactly. It's so funny how stuff comes back. <laughs> People are, you know, hyped about the city, you know, and I remember like talking to my friends, I'm like, man, you guys need to come out here and just like see what I see. Because they live around the city, but they never really come out here. And then they, 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 they asked me like, what's the big deal? You know, like coming yeah. down here. And then, so, so, so that's one thing. And the other thing is, it is a big deal, like being out here. Uh, the potential to change stuff and the potential to uh, make an impact is very present here. So it's sort of like a play on words and uh, I think the more I think about it, the more I can come up with different things. Yeah. Well, that's what it. That's what okay. <laughs> and was it seeing that energy, I know that you have a, a collective you call Open City that's mm -hmm. supposed to be a space for entrepreneurs to come together, yeah. support each other and get ideas off the ground. Can you tell us more about that? Exactly, yeah. I mean, it was a friend of mine who had started a business before me who gave me a lot of advice and we had all gotten advice from lots of other retailers who'd been doing this in the city for a long time. Mm -hmm. And we thought, it's like, you know, that's the best advice to go to people who are really doing it. Yeah. You know, business consultants and all that are great, but the people who are really on the ground running bakeries and coffee shops know what's up here. So um, we thought, well, we need that kind of peer to peer support. And we invited our friends to the bar and said, hey, we'll like talk about business and how, how it is to do business in the city. And it's, we're going in our fifth year. We have the next, um, our first meeting of this season is next Tuesday. And it grew from like, you know, having a handful of people to 100 people, a packed house, and, you know, um, really great panel discussions um, about everything from finding the right location to marketing your business to, um, you know, how to, how to, function and a lot of people are starting shops, you know, it's like this everywhere in New York or wherever. I'm a creative and so, you know, some of the business, businessy aspects of starting a business yeah. didn't come naturally to me. 
And so I did, I looked into some of the incubators and programs that we have in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And the one that I was in was called Bizdom U. It's a business incubator started by Dan Gilbert, who's the owner of Quicken Loans and okay. Cleveland Cavaliers. And it was a really cool program because it really allowed me to kind of learn, mm -hmm. you know, use that, that left brain mm -hmm. and gain some of those skills that I don't naturally have. And so I would definitely encourage people to search for those resources in their own towns. Mm -hmm. They have been really helpful for me. Yeah. You know, being in the city and just living here and experiencing what I'm experiencing through my business and just through meeting people, um, things are always changing. Uh, and I feel like there has to be an emphasis on um, capital besides money. So like intellectual capital, like emotional Social capital, capital yeah. like yeah, and people. But at the same time, you know, I, I met with this reality that money is also necessary to um, promote some of the things that need to be done. So while I'm interested in measuring success, you know, um, in regards to how many people contribute to a project, we also need to meet some sort of a monetary goal, you know. So going back to your question, um, people are important because just for the, su the sustainability of a project, you know, if more people can contribute to a project, then the project has a diverse base, you know, so it's, it's um, over time, it's more uh, sustainable. If one person gives like half of the, the money and then the next day this guy decides, or, or girl decides uh, that they're no longer interested in supporting the project, then it can founder, mm -hmm. a flounder, excuse me. So um, people are important and, and energizing these people to introduce the ideas or the concepts around the project to their friends and their family and hopefully um, that way we can get more people and also really more money or more volunteers you know so we're looking you know really at the um, human capital and also the um, you know expertise and money that comes with that uh, capital the blog i am young detroit keeps me inspired all the time you know every every week and every month we're profiling young people who are doing incredible things here and so that is they inspired me yeah. you know Besides that, I read a lot of other blogs. I try to keep up with trends and mm -hmm. things like that. So I'm always trying to stay one step ahead and know what's happening. The issues of gentrification that are coming up in terms of you know a lot of new businesses coming into the older areas and maybe certain people might be getting pushed out or might be perception that folks are pushed out or not being welcomed into this this new um, new fold of, of development. What are your your thoughts on? on how that is Yeah, looking. well, I say the word uncomfortable a lot mm -hmm. lately in my conversations mm -hmm. around the city. I think this is, Detroit's in a place of, change. you know, it's a changing place, and there's gonna be moments that are a little uncomfortable, but they're really great opportunities to talk about what kinds of places we wanna live in. Mm -hmm. And I love having those conversations, and I work with Model D and WDAT to do a monthly conversation, and we're gonna, we're gonna look at that mm -hmm. issue. Um, I think that, um, you know, there's there's these indie retailers coming up and then there's like national chains that are like starting to pay attention to Detroit yeah. So there's a little tension there um, I personally think that we haven't seen a lot of displacement yet mm -hmm. because we have such high vacancy rate in yeah. Detroit So it's different than in New York City when a neighborhood changes really quick and people mm -hmm. get moved out really mm -hmm. quickly mm -hmm. I've been I've lived through that in New York City and I felt that and mm -hmm. I've gotten like a little displaced here though, there's so much empty space. I mean, I'm looking outside of my, my window and there's all this empty space around us that's not being used. So if a new shop were to come in across the street, it wouldn't be pushing anyone out. It'd yeah. just be bringing something in. Yeah. So that's different in different neighborhoods throughout mm -hmm. the city. Mm -hmm. But I think it's something that's really important for all of us to keep talking about. And to be aware of as the development's yes. happening, when there is more vacancy, just so yes. that it doesn't become an issue. Yes, and I feel like the best people who are in planning and development right now understand that every neighborhood should have a balance between affordable housing and you know, mm -hmm. luxury housing and you know school you know family neighborhoods and then young professional neighborhoods you know everyone has to be kind of accommodated it's a city it yeah. needs to serve lots of different people actually the guy across the street I was talking to him today he uh, he runs that um, brewery and he made a comment to me that um, you know the problems are systemic and they need like uh, a systemic interim. solutions and I said well in the interim we need something happening you know but I, I, I totally understand what he's saying and I understand hopefully what I'm doing um, so I think right now if the world was populated with projects that I was funding um, I don't know what sort of solutions those would 
made. Yeah. I think that we need like a mix, like Pear was saying, like of big and big small. and small. But we need we need people to think differently and to, to think it's extensively. It's the mentality and the value yeah, system yeah. that's backing all of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, even though I want people to support the projects, which are great, <laughs> don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that um, we need to keep a bigger issue in mind. Yeah, as we, well. we 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 need to really um, you know embrace the diversity of opinions, of projects, of people. So. Thank you so much for having us at 71 Pop. Um, if you did not know about Margarita Berry and just all the entrepreneurial vision she has here in Detroit and for Detroit, check out her website, iamyoungdetroit.com. A lot of amazing young doers on there as well. All facets of industry and really doing inspiring work. You can get a lot of inspiration there. And you're also going to be rolling out IamYoungNation.com. Yeah, yeah, I am Young Nation will be launching next year. I'm really excited about that. Okay. We'll be kind of branching out into other cities. Um, so very excited about that. And also 71pop.com. If you yes. visit there, you know, you can shop our local artists from anywhere in the world. So. Oh, really amazing. Technology linking us all the time. So I'm youngdetroit.com, 71pop.com. If you didn't know about them, now you know.